A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints, November 29th, Saint Humilis of Bisignano, Confessor, First Order. Calabria was the birthplace of Saint Humilis. The year was 1582. In baptism, he received the name of Luke Antony, and at a very early age, he gave evidence of great love of God and holy things. His parents spared no efforts to give their boy a good training. He obeyed not only their commands, but even their least wishes. The noisy games of his associates held no attraction for him. He found his delight in prayer and in going to church. His confessor was aware of the special gifts God was granting to the boy and permitted him at a very early age to receive Holy Communion frequently. As a young man, he spent the time he could spare from his heavy duties in the fields and with the flocks by meditating on the sufferings of our Saviour before a crucifix. At 18, when it was necessary to choose a vocation, Luke Antony began to pray fervently for light. He joyfully came to the conclusion that he was called to be a lay brother in the Franciscan order. But a cross awaited him at the start. Obstacles presented themselves and the fulfilment of his cherished desire had to be postponed for quite a time. He did not, however, lose courage, but began to lead a life like that of a strict and zealous religious. Nine years passed by before the hindrances were removed. He was now admitted as a lay brother at Bisignano and received the name that fitted him so well, Brother Humilis, that is, the humble one. He was a model to his brethren. A devoted client of the Immaculate Virgin, he obtained from her, through much prayer and mortification, the virtue of purity to such a degree that he seemed to be an angel in the flesh. But his love of poverty and humility were just as great. He dreaded all honour or distinction accorded to him and publicly acknowledged himself to be the greatest sinner. But our Lord, who exalts the humble and gives wisdom to the simple, gave supernatural light to Humilis, so that learned men came to him for advice and instruction in their problems. Pope Gregory XV had him come to Rome and always received him with special kindness. Urban VIII also appreciated him highly and often discussed matters with him. Illness finally forced Humilis to return to his convent at Bisignano for medical attention, but his life was drawing to a close. He suffered severe pains with dauntless patience until the moment of his death. Crucifix in hand, he fixed his eyes intently on it and entered into celestial joy on November 16, 1637. The remarkable favours which God granted him in life and after his death were carefully examined by Pope Pius IX and approved as miraculous. Pope Leo XIII enrolled his name among the blessed, and he was canonized in 2002 by Pope John Paul II. November 29th is a special Franciscan All Saints Day, a feast. All the saints mentioned in this book, in fact, all the members of all the orders of St. Francis who have attained their goal in heaven, whether known or unknown, are honored in a special manner on this day. November the 29th was selected because on that day in 1223, Pope Honorius III granted approval to the final rule which St. Francis gave to the Friars Minor. By observing this rule faithfully, many have become saints. A Reflection on the Image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus is a sign that we are filled with the love of Christ. We find that love in the thoughts and sentiments of Saint Humilis. From the days of his youth, his heart was imbued with a love for Jesus crucified as he reflected on the great love of Christ for us poor mortals. The love of Jesus Christ, of which the heart is the symbol, is the real spiritual object of devotion to the Sacred Heart. Behold the heart which has loved men so much, our Lord said to Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, and then he showed her his heart from which flames of fire proceeded. Consider that when our Lord showed St. Margaret Mary his sacred heart with the flames of fire proceeding from it, a cross stood out amid the flames, and the heart itself was surrounded by a crown of thorns. He meant to indicate that his love, for which he gave the last drop of his blood on the cross, has received only a meagre response from so many Christians, whose coldness, lack of fidelity, and continual offences are like a renewed crowning of thorns. 
The heathen soldiery wound a crown for the head of our Lord. Unfaithful Christians wind a crown about his heart. Consider that there is no true devotion to the Sacred Heart unless we strive to imitate his virtues. Among these, our Lord himself points out two in particular. Learn of me, because I am meek and humble of heart. Matthew 11, 29. Recall the marvellous proofs of humility and meekness which our Lord gave us during his life and in the hour of death. These were the mirror of virtues upon which Saint Humilis centred his attention. Plead with our Lord that at the intercession of his servant Humilis, you may, like him, imitate these virtues of our Lord. Prayer of the Church O Lord Jesus Christ, who art meek and humble of heart, grant us the grace so to imitate thy blessed confessor Humilis, who gave us so unusual an example of humility and meekness, that we may renounce the vanities of this life, and ever serve thee, who livest and reignest for ever and ever. Amen.